Two stories beautifully converged in the last match we get to watch tonight. Tenrek and Keg back on for the final here for the, uh, the the VCL North American Challengers Open Qualifier. Number two powered by Zippo. Sorry, I mess up a word in there somewhere. But regardless, uh, we get to see Core in Crime City face off to see who gets to the final four in the upper bracket here as the final match on that mainstream tonight. Keg, you and I got to watch Crime City put on a show in that previous match against BTR, and they have been on quite the ramp. Page. Is Core going to be too high of a hurdle? Well, I mean, it's hard to say. I mean, we've seen Core face up against some members of Crime City in the past, way back in the Vegas Heist offseason event. We actually saw some members of Crime City back when they were on Sad Purple face up against Core on similar maps too, and it didn't work out too well in their favor. But again, that was back in October. That was a long, long time ago, Tenrec. Plenty has changed since then, and I have full faith in both of these teams. But I will say, both these teams haven't had a break really much today. They've been going series after series, and most importantly, they've continued to stay in the upper bracket too. So is it too high of a hurdle to get past core? Who is to say? But again, it's so similar to what we had seen before with Mad Science. There is that benefit where core has that structure in months of preparation. It's true. Uh, you know, uh, the, 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 the the simple idea that core has been together longer is one that can carry them so dang far in a realm like challengers where there are so many pug stacks just trying to find a fourth or a fifth in their stack before this begins and crime city was really no different a couple scraps from mochi couple scraps from sad purple couple scraps from winthrop and oh, yeah. you have a pretty bomb team that's able to dethrone son of car and leap down to the losers bracket off rip and then take down btr pretty dang comfortably in the follow-up. Meanwhile, Core, uh, where we last left them, they definitely struggled a bit against Mad Science, but they comfortably resonate, uh, uh, comfortably beat Resonate, I think only allowing five rounds total throughout that entire match. Total stomp mm. from them. So they are riding the high coming into what is, again, top eight here in the winner's bracket. There is still a, an elimination's worth uh, for both these teams right now. So whoever loses this, still not out of the bracket. Gotta feel good for them, but they would love to get to day two. Absolutely absolutely perfect and both these teams I think have the capability to do so but like you said core I think definitely the favorites walking into this one just because of recency bias and, and again just just the fact that they are a team who has been together for a long time yeah I mean like look going through the upper bracket you've made it this far I half agree with the recency bias I think core has put up a great performance since the offseason had begun they for me have been one of the best play, uh, teams that we've seen so far whenever they're on land easily grand finals but it also depends on what maps we get to see next this could easily be a shutdown against core depending on the flexibility that crime city likes to bring out so let's take a look at the maps and see where we're going to be heading to especially the map bands i really want to see how it all plays out Let's well, it, it begins with Crime City kind of going back to square one. Their default, their ban of bind immediately. Yes. That is what we expected from them. And then directly after, we also expected them to have Lotus be their first pick of a map. Core could choose to ban either Lotus or Split. They chose the latter there. So we're not going to see Split as that map too. Lotus is the one that we're going to. And it's where Crime City looks amazing. That opening with the Reina Gecko core is really dangerous. And I'm really excited to see that in action against a team as good as Core. Core will take us to Ascent for map number two. Definitely a comfort pick for them that Crime City may not feel as viable on as the five stack that they are, but it should be great to see both these teams at their best on such an old head of a map. Uh, Breeze going to be that decider after Icebox and Sunset are the subsequent bans, so definitely excited to see how those teams uh, take on that sort of distance challenge if we end up making that far, because far different than Lotus and Ascent. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, going from the beginning to the end here, Crime City bringing out Bind as that hard ban. We've seen them ban it throughout the entirety of this qualifiers. Makes sense to me. It's a tough map, and it's also been a tough map for Core. So maybe a blessing in disguise that we're not going to be seeing it. Split being taken down, I'm a little sad. I like Core Split, but we've also seen some pretty big blunders from them in the past when it came down to that map. So oh, yes. can't say I'm too surprised there. And then going to Lotus, I do think this is more of a safety pick for both of these maps. It's not one that we see core generally pick into unless they have to and that's similar to an instance that we see here because that is crime city's map pick but them starting off on the defensive side i think could be a really cool benefit and like you mentioned we do get to see some interesting comps from both these sides but even then right tenrak we're, we're in a position now where the viability of the sky meta on lotus isn't as big as it used to be with her given changes so that's going to put us in an instance now where it's like okay what do we want to play instead 
of Sky. Do we want to bring out the Gecko? Can we bring out the Fade? I, I've been pleasantly surprised with the Gecko plays. I agree. No, it's been really fun watching this Gecko come out from, from CC and other teams, of course, in the Lotus play. And the, the initiator conversation specifically there is definitely a fun one to be had. I'm more excited for the Breeze pick just because it, it really makes me feel like Core is more on the back foot than they're really gambling for. Because it seems like a lesser of three evils type of deal by the time they get to that decider map. Uh, getting rid of Sunset feels like the only viable option when you have a team as volatile as Crime City standing in front of you with the war path that they've laid down thus far so i'm 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 assuming core doesn't want to get that far i'm assuming cc yeah. doesn't want to get that far either obviously but um I, I think that core they need to feel comfortable here on lotus and ascent they need to hold their ground for this attack that they're going to go into which they are going into it immediately core is elected to start out on the defense here on map number one so uh, yeah i mean the, the ubiquitous question what are they going to go for to open these things up what is t dog Ooh. gonna pick bro oh what is he cooking what is t dog cooking all right, nothing okay. too, too wild. Crime City bring out that Reyna Gecko pick once again. You know, we, we did get to see Reyna in our last series that you and I commentated earlier today. We were a little skeptical about the Reyna pick. It didn't work out well, but a core reason why we didn't see it work was because that was the spearhead for that attacking team. Now having Sacred on Reyna and having a mobility entry duelist like Spoof, that's going to be really huge. Oh, uh, you want to hear my Spoof story? Oh, yes, please. So you, you've I was been at, telling me you're gonna tell it. I'm so excited. Yes, uh, I was at I was at an event uh, a few months ago, mm -hmm. and a certain someone wearing a hood named you may have heard of them before named Fluorescent came up to me. Oh yeah, I've heard of her. Handout. She seems chill. And she was like, "Hi, I'm Spoof." And like you know, <laughs> you, you, it's the first time you're in a land. You don't really know faces to names. The hood is up. And I'm like, yeah. "Sure, I guess it's Spoof." Right. Hey, what's up, Spoof? How are you? And only like a day later did she come up to me and be like, "Oh." I lied to you. I'm like, <laughs> it's okay, Flora. I understand. Dude, I can't believe you met Spoof. That's crazy. <laughs> well, That's Spoof wild. was really there, too. I just saw two Spoofs. <laughs> what was Spoof going around saying? Was he also introducing himself as Spoof? No, I don't I don't think he introduced himself really at all. Oh, okay. He was I wish sending he did, Flora though. out to, to <laughs> greet people for it. Oh, it's like, a, it's like an automated drone. It's like a boombot. Literally sending a boombot yeah, to yeah. introduce yourself. <laughs> She sees somebody she doesn't know. <laughs> Hi! Hello, I'm Spoof! Hey! You're just like at the airport. What are you talking about? <laughs> all right, all right. So this is interesting right away. Look at the position now that Couché is putting themselves in. Normally we get to see the Viper going for that Lurk up of A. Huh. That's weird. Crime City doesn't have a Viper. So the Omen Lurk would then mean there are no smokes available. This has to be an A execute. Unless they can get the opening pick. Yeah, Cushé is is just holding this so nobody gets too big for their britches on core. There's no way they're not going to push A out of this. They just uh, want to maybe expend something here. Unless Cushé decides to rotate, but no, he's going to rubble, so... This this makes me a little nervous. It yeah. really depends on the timing now between both these teams. I, mean, I don't know. In previous series that Crime, uh, Crime Cities... Timing is pretty good when it comes to these macro level rotates, but again, you add this extra pressure, you're trying to force out core to use this utility. That hasn't been something they've been really known for, but oh geez, Tenrak, I'm nervous about this push. They've already gotten two smokes off a of nerve. So I think Crime City's definitely happy with this as they'll start the slow push. Cushé is gonna give himself away with that turret getting procced, but I, that's so much space already taken, and core can't guarantee a hard rotate right now. Because they don't know where the rest of this team is. They only guarantee one. Yeah. And, I mean, with so much already sacrificed for that mound, yeah, I mean, Nerve is going to throw a third smoke on his C entrance. So there is nothing really slowing down this push except for the Swarm Grenades that Zip is going to pop on main and at least get rid of Cushé. Rest of the Crime City teams uh, come oh. screaming on, but Zeldra is holding it down in tree as well. Is able to get rid of two more here. So it looks like Core is able to hold down that back line for the most part, but Crime City has a couple other ways in, including this uh, door to B site, which is what they'll take to get the spike down with 10 seconds left on the clock. No, T-Dog comes screaming in with the shock dart and the frenzy to deal with the remaining two. Core, keep three up for round one.
This is a perfect round to exemplify the difference between a signed team that has been around for a while and a team like Crime City that is a like puggy, bring it together for this qualifier five stack. There's nothing wrong with either one of those, but there was so much trust involved with Core to not over rotate away from Seaside that round. You are faced against uh, what a 2v5 there if you're holding a uh, tree. You have to watch out so much and really rely on that utility that leverage those numbers to being your own. And Thankfully, it worked out well in Core's favor, but now this is their buy-up round. Really close in condensed weaponry. They're going to play close to the site for the most part for Core's end. Zeldris already opting for the Vandal. A very uh, interesting choice there, but I don't disagree with it. Cool. Yeah. Wow. Not even. Yeah. Not even. The Good Lurch coverage. now gone. You don't have any more smokes. No. No paranoia either. You have to work with your double flash. Have to just trade so much more than you're given. But they will try to breach tree first, knowing that that's going to be Ziff's territory and basically nobody else's with all the presence that was in B site. Ziff might be enough. Yeah, T Dog in the back line can hold it down a little bit longer. Ziff just going to try and play to stall because the hard rotates here from core. This should be pretty cleaned up unless Renz is able to grab this. They are. So that's at least the site opened up. Some extra creds on the spike plant. And uh, question is, how much more do you get rid of here? Yeah, paint shell's a bit too late, and uh, with the wingman, you can't really guarantee that. So, got to go in for the hard breach, and uh, with only pistols to Crime City's name, that still shouldn't be that difficult. But Lucas can stall with the mosh pit for a second, at least force core to second guess and toss out a little bit more util, spend a couple more creds to deal with this last body, and maybe throw another body at it themselves. No, nope, Zell just is gonna hold oh, it with one smoke, and yeah, the triple swing makes it pretty easy. Core once again. Round two is theirs. There, there was a very, very brief reality. Not that I think it really would have happened, but Lucas could have gotten a pick so much earlier and brought out Thrash to win that round. One orb ah. away for a lot of that round. That could have been so scary. But thankfully now into this buy-up round, we do have Prime City bringing out that Thrash. That's going to be a huge initiator tool. It really just depends on where they opt to bring it out here. b site could be an option because it's closed and condensed, but CC, they've just been spearheading a site. They want to find a way to unlock it. But round after round, despite winning it, Core keep changing their defensive structure. They were banking on the fact that this should be a B-side push with that KJ turret, but they're still holding it down for A. These quick rotations mean already that they, being Core, already know what to expect. And so they'll already kind of lean a little heavier. And with everything getting procced, it's no secret at this point, so Thrash is going to be let fly. See what they can find. Zeldra searching in a very open field. That is impressive to be able to even find one in such a dangerous position. Starly caught with the dizzy, but really just undeterred for the most part. Kushe is able to slide in and actually grab two off the Kalat, but uh, no guarantee on the plant yet. Paranoia going to slow down. Great toss from Nerve to give oh, look at this Ziff that time to drop, but Ziff is not ready for Kushe to come back up to drop. Now on the verge of an ace for this omen. Pretty crazy, not gonna lie. Gonna be able to get spiked down and now has to wait out Nerve, who they know is probably coming up from backside. Only one smoke to his name for the next 25 seconds, too, so can only block out one of these at a time. Has no guarantee, yeah. but knows at least one of these is gonna be in tree for sure. No idea where Kushe could be, though, and that is exactly what he wants. He would love to get this 5k off rip. Oh, but no, it's Spoof that can hold it down. Nerve was trying to go for a, a, a cheeky little peek on the uh, smoke proc, but Crime City, they can keep two up and uh, grab their first round. They grabbed their first round, but at what cost, right? Let's look at the rebuys into this next yeah. round. Uh, well, they lost a lot of bodies there. They did get the spike down. They did expend one of their most valuable ults in their arsenal fairly early on, but you're in your third round. You might as well bring out Thrash that early, right? You have it, use it. That just means Lucas can use it more times per half. But the buys aren't as bad as I thought they would be. Just a few light shields across the board. That's not too bad right now, but you have Starly. With the Odin, that can turn a site into paper mache if you're not careful. And right away, CC are going to change up their tempo. They're going to bring things back over to C. But this is what we saw on Pistol. That lurk up from Kushe. Certainly now, Core is very well aware of this prowess. And as soon as something like that door is tapped or even the orb, Odin's waiting on the other side just for Kushe. I think regardless of that fear, though, uh, this is a good idea from Crime City to at least pressure Nerve. Because I, I think Nerve has to be the weakest link for this attack for the most part. If you get rid of these smokes, then Core really has no way back in, and that's oh. been a lot of their MO. 
Couchet's Lurk, like you said, isn't going to get nearly enough traction or as much traction as it did before. Is because they'll be the slightest well, bit more prep keep for in it mind than too, This isn't a dedication. Couchet can TP oh. back over to their... Well, never mind. They can yeah, TP back in anymore. heaven. <laughs> Whatever deity is in the sky, I guess. Right. You can TP to the next round real quick. <laughs> Rest of Crime City is going to commit to the sea site in response. Zelda's just going to toss out the showstopper and not get a kill with it. Let's go. I love Valorant. CC gets sight for free. Yeah, that's really tragic, bro. Hate to see it. Core on the way back. Uh, I don't know if T Dog wants to approach this yet. And it looks like he'll at least grab a sight line real quick while the rest of the team comes on back. But it's going to take him a hot minute to. There's so much to clear. Snarly has no idea how much of back haul is done. So they'll all hit the waterfall instead, where T Dog has it all covered. Is launching a little bit of util, a couple mollies, a couple bolts. You know the rules. Okay, T Dog actually T -Dog. will clip sacred. Or, yeah, sacred. That is, uh, that's the showstopper getting its kill. Thank you so much, buddy. Ziff now to swing on the other end, and there should be enough coverage for the rest of this if there's enough time on Spike. Ziff gonna get it all done himself, Snarly, for the re-up. Snarly can hold it down, and Core is able to get all their resources spread properly on a seaside to take their third round. What a clinical retake there. That was really great, yeah. Yeah, I mean, more often than not, you would see teams, maybe if it was one body less, we'd opt for a save, but the fact that Core still felt comfortable enough to initiate with T-Dog's shock bolts in order to get that first kill, then push their way in, just shows, again, how much structure, chemistry, and trust goes within Core's inner workings. But... We did see Lucas go for the plant that last round, and that's going to be a consistent factor we're going to be seeing on this attacking side. Lucas is going to keep farming up for that thrash over and over again. That and Renz's lockdown are the most oppressive tools in the arsenal of CC. Spoof is also one away from getting that showstopper. Orban B no longer existing, can't grab that anymore. But trying to fish for their opening pick in Spoof's favor may very well help with the back lines to get on site. Oh, do they know they're dealing with the one and only T-Dog? It's a one and only T-Dog that has to deal with several pain shells. Crossed his way into steps just to space him out. And that's what Crime City have been better than ever at doing, is, is just boxing. I mean, you, you saw Lucas tossing out the Dizzy immediately, just again, to play with Nerve's feelings. And force that constant interaction, that constant commitment oh, that to the same place. Snarly's gonna search for some wall bangs and find some good damage to start things out, and some time for T Dog to come back and pick up the rest. One that is two for him, one for Zeldris. Everybody from Core is getting in on the action, and Renz is now stuck on an island where he's able to at least grab two nice headshots, buddy. Now Snarly okay, gonna Renz. look for uh, the remainder here, but. I mean, a little tough for him to get out of this. Everybody coming from all angles at this stage. Better hurry up and kill him, Ziff. There you go, buddy. Three stand, once again, for core. 4-1. If I'm Crime City, I am so mad at Smokes right now. Because remember, at the <laughs> end of the BTR matchup on Split that we had just seen, uh, it would have ended a lot sooner had we not seen BTR just spray phantoms through smokes the entirety of the last like four or five rounds and it's happening again cc are going for the timeout because they're just trying to delete smokes from the server from the mainframe oh but it's a tough shout because again you're, you're looking at a team that has the capabilities of trying to fake out these big gigantic rotates and take early site space and just make sure they can always push into skeleton crews but core's not a team that allows that yeah we saw that when you and i commentated earlier and i'm sure with the resonate metric it wasn't too much different so cc have to think of something a little bit different maybe just a full five stack pushing the b side or maybe the reliance of ults once again we did see a c side tank we've seen a side takes but it really just depends on what info gathering you can get and you have to rely on lucas to do that i think to the point of of spamming through smokes you know that's a, that's not always a reliable tool you can go with just like unloading no, no. your chambers. It's that just used, purposely against It used CC. to be way more viable. The thing is, and this is this is a much bigger conversation that can be had about pub stacks, is a lot of coordination that comes from teams that have less experience deals with synchronicity. And synchronicity takes coordination. And coordination takes time. Time Remember inside core smokes. Retake. Core can just launch a bunch of bullets at smokes because they know that there's probably at least one person waiting for somebody else from Crime City to come into the smoke as well so they can launch themselves at the problem. There is, there is calculation going on into... 
when you unload your mag and when you decide to let it be. And a lot of the time, Core understand that there's a lot of waiting that Crime City has to do in order to make their plans, which are very well put together, very beautifully, oh. you know, put. Look! And again, Snarly ready for that, knowing Crime City, they gotta play the waiting game here in Courtyard. They gotta look for a body, they gotta look for the door, they gotta look for the smoke to come up, they gotta look for all this youth to the proc. And in the process, you can let an ultimate fly. You can, you know, get a hard rotation on early. You can open up door. You can do so much on a macro level as core preliminarily with just your guns, with not not even looking at the uh, at the offense, not even understanding who is where, you can just let it all fly, and you'll yeah. usually get some sort of connection. Oh, this is that big stack up I was hoping to see. A good flash in, close and condensed. This is CC's bread and butter. And Sacred's gonna use it to open things up. T Dog stuck for the long haul. Well done, Center or Crime City. I'm oh, sorry, I'm Philly native. Crime City opened things up on a B site. Everybody from Core. Boxed out this time, doing what they need to do. Snarly's big gun give him away. Spoof gonna take care of that too. And now Crime City can extend. Now Crime City can go do their own thing. They can do the thing that Core does, which is communicate with silence. They understand how good each of these players are. They can let them do their own thing to an extent. Lucas is gonna pay the price after he goes a little bit too far, but now they just understand that Ziff is out of the way and can't really pose too much more of a threat. Crime City will guarantee that second round for themselves with four standing for the time being. We'll see if Ziff can cut that short, though. Yeah, I'm really good willing away from CC at the beginning of that round, ensuring that T-Dog would bring out that Hunter's Fury. I mean, there's no way you could properly guess that other than just putting that util and hoping for the best. But having that gone away made B-Side a lot easier to approach for CC's favor. I'm imagining now Core will probably stack up a few more bodies and utility on B into this next round. And that was the cleanest round we've seen from CC so far. I wouldn't be surprised if they try to goad into B-Side more often, but that's where the ball comes into Core's hands. They have to find a way to make sure that cannot happen again. And what am I looking at? Zeldris, Operator, shut down the opening pick. That'll make sure B-Site will think twice for CC's favor in the future. But they're already pointing towards A-Site. They could very well just whittle down that utility again. Well, silence. They're burning bits, but yeah, I mean... Oh, they're ready now for Snarly. Yeah, same song and dance, but Crime City wants to sing a bit of a different tune. Snarly paying the price early on with some chip. Heavy chip, too. Gonna have to burn away that boom bot as well, just to guarantee that no one else is paying him too much attention. T-Dog, oh. <laughs> when do you get in there now, buddy? You have your intel, it's but hard. do you press the trigger? No, you don't. You just let Ziff oh, let go I like of that this. lockdown instead. Yeah, I mean, this is, this is great. This just forces Crime City to do more of what they don't want to do at the moment, but they love doing when they like to do it, which is wait, let the door fly. See if you get any openings. Ziff is gonna give them maybe one beautiful timing, beautiful timing for two. But Crime City still take trees, still might take sight. Core might have to keep their distance and now they will be forced to with the lockdown coming from Crime City themselves. T-Dog finally escaping the door just to head back into courtyard. Well, they'll have to play the long distance game yet again. Yeah, no shot of being able to destroy that lockdown right away. Sacred's good to remove T-Dog, a 2v3. Zelgis, though, Operator in play, has that long angle from Cliff in play. Could very well find a huge shot, but now everyone's playing so far back. Hiding in tree. Unknown about how many bodies are now inside of tree site. This is huge for CC. The mind games are true. First pick from Nerf. It's a good damage done. Zeldris is still holding this Operator, though. This makes it so tough when you're just yeah. spamming, but Zeldris can get the pick on Renz. Now it's down to Sacred, who is still... Dancing around this smoke. Pick up a rifle here, so Zeldris should be fine. Yeah, he's picked up the Phantom. So it's just coming down to find the right shot, and Zeldris certainly does. Perfect timing as well. Kor can grab a fifth by the skin of their teeth. I can already hear what CC are saying in their comms. It's those smokes! It's the Phantoms <laughs> and the smokes! It's not us! But no, I mean, that was an expensive round coming out from CC. We had the lockdown expended, we had a whole bunch of guns and utility expended away, including an Odin. And it makes things a lot more difficult to approach A from here on out. This has been, with that Zippo replay, over and over again, big pop-off individual moments from different members of Core, and they have those contingency plans. Zip brought down the lockdown, T-Dog used that spacing that CC needed to respect to back away, open up the baby door, to have that rotate potential that ended up not not working out and Zeldris is that contingency plan yet again for that b-side rush that worked before okay not a bad trade 
And that's certainly not where Nerve was before. So Crime City are immediately getting the memo that Cora now switching it up. And that might be scarier than Nerve even getting that opening kill in the first place. Certainly enough for them to get two more in Rubble. And Crime City, uh, they just have to stay put. They can't, you know, play out for spawn now. They lose too much space for that. They have to play for the room first and at least try to nab this spike back. But Zeldrasis has a sight line that he doesn't really want to get rid of. First op shot will fail, though, so that should be enough to get him out of the way. No, that's just enough for everyone else for Core to start looking in the right direction. <laughs> it's not like... Oh, oh. Where did that come from? <laughs> Hello? <laughs> He backed into the snake fight. Okay. He shot it behind him so that he could oh. get out. Oh. That's so sick, dude. That's you know so what, great. The craziest part, as I was wondering, like in the back of my mind, like, okay, there's two left alive. Is someone going to use this opportunity to just farm for kills to get those ults? And Snarly now with the Viper's Pit. So in theory, you can bring that Odin back out, set up in tree, maybe even A main, and just lock it down completely. That's going to mean A-Site, what CC love to approach, not going to be a play. But it does open up B-Site a little bit more. Or are we going to see that lockdown? Maybe if they hear the audio of the approach. No? See? Okay. No, I mean, I love it. The, the lack of a Viper's Pit? No, well, I mean, yeah, that. I love, I like, I do like the silence from Core here. Just don't let them know you have a leg up. Which, Crime City admittedly do. Sacred, another gorgeous entry. This time, the hard reach to door that Snarly can only react bit by bit to. And yeah, there's the thrash from Lucas. That's a great combination. Zeldris reactively with the showstopper to at least get back on site, but it's very fragmented from Core. They don't exactly have the space that they need to make this work. Renz has been pretty boxed out, but is able to win the duel and spoof quite low. Nerve still has Work cut out for him here. Renz will not be forced to peek this. Oh, oh tough time here. But Renz, the wrong shot's got to fix it up with the sidearm, but will. A thrifty round nine for Crime City. They make it work and grab a third. You know, we talk about CC being a pug stack, but Sancred and Lucas have worked together for such a long time. The duality of that thrash from Lucas and the swing immediately from Sacred was chef's kiss beautiful and it's gonna force core to go for a timeout here they're struggling on retaking b site when it's closer and more condensed and as you said yourself tenric it, it's harder to get that leverage or even be at a disadvantage and take it back against cc a lot of that has to do with the hands of sacred too just rushing in getting these really important pivotal kills Big question is now, okay, do we want to set up, say, again, that Viper's Pit outside of B main? Zeldris can maybe op outside of A or C long and see what the switch up from CC sides will be and see what we can do to just shut down Crime City before they can even approach. Because we haven't seen too much of that from Core yet outside of some pivotal thrifty rounds. But with that being said, though... Oh? Hello? Hmm. Huh? Oh, is what? I think my feet is frozen. Hello? It's what? still 23 seconds. No, we're. I think we're. Oh, oh, I'm good. Oh, Are you oh. good? I, I don't know. Okay? I think my brain just turned off. You... Okay. My brain's rebooting. I, I saw the 23 and I'm like, wait, oh, did my internet go out? Stuck and you're stuck. Oh, 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 oh. Okay. It's okay. Oh, I'm awake now. It's that, it's oh. that, it's that kind of time. It's okay. The, the, the adrenaline pumping. Okay. But yeah. no, I mean, again, what's this different setup going to be? So their answer now is just a death ball outside of A, a three stack trap style play to shove out A. And there's no op available. Nothing that we see from Core just yet. Instead, it's going to be this little bit of a pushback maneuver. Viper's Pit out on Seasight. Yeah. Spoof does farm up the orb. That's huge leverage to get into the backside of C. Showstopper could easily nullify this Viper's Pit. Shea is going to get found out a bit here by this drone. But that's just going to alert Core to the fact that there's not an insane commitment to the Viper's Pit yet. Really? No way. Another extension here, and, and it it makes it known that Core's approach on a courtyard is not explicitly anti-lurk. It's more just presence to make sure that Crime City doesn't get the jump on them. Nerve. But Nerve's yeah, in Nerve such a is, valuable spot yeah, right Nerve now. Nerve's in a great spot. And with that smoke, it's not exactly obvious that he's going to get given away. <laughs> oh, he gets Dizzy flashed! Dizzy does stick him, though! And so we'll have to duck behind the screen. Spoof wants to chase it. He hasn't heard it! He didn't, re he didn't realize the TP was away! 
He's not going to catch a thing unless the screen reveals Zeldris, but it doesn't. Zeldris has the ultimate backline. Oh. One, two, still another behind, but Lucas will be able to get the turnaround. And Zip cannot finalize. Or T-Dog, rather, cannot finalize. Rest of Core having to come back on where Renz is forced to stick it onto A. And the turret immediately giving away one. Nerve is going to get stuck in a tree, but Rest of Core can come on back and they're able to get a much easier pinch for the long run, especially considering that there's only one swarm available here. This is a pretty done deal for Renz unless he goes absolutely insane, which not out of the question. We've seen some good moments from him already, and we tend to see some good moments from him in times like this. But Core are able to tap, stick, and get enough intel just to spray. Renz goes down, Core goes up to seven. Yeah, great. Just collapse again from Core. It's what we've come to know them to do on their defensive side. No matter, again, one site, two site, three sites on a map. So good at being able to coordinate, again, a giant level and making sure that even a singular player can just have pop off plays and shut down the entirety of a team like CC. Though, again, two more rounds this half. The attacking side of CC, they're not going to have the best buys in the world. What do we have? Two sheriffs, a vandal at best. Lucas, not even close really to getting that thrash again. There's not any ultimates that you can use to your leverage besides friends. Maybe farming up for A orb to get that lockdown in A again. But even when we last saw that ult, it didn't necessarily end in the best round for CC's side. Let's see now. It's up to Snarly once again to be that singular hold on A with the healthy alarm bot. Much more aggressive than normal. Just waiting off that timing now. Especially if it's Renz to pick up that orb and they fall first, that'll be gigantic. All the standard spots after they get the slight intel and that's enough for Crime City to go for the boost, but great reactivity from Snarly. Cannot find a second, but the damage is done for Crime City, enough for the rest of Core to again come back. Ziff, good peek out the door to actually find Renz tailing. So Crime City left pretty fragmented now. Lucas though, makes his way up to drop unfettered and can get rid of one more. Lockdown post plant, pretty easily destroyed. Core, again, have the territory under control. That's never in the question. It just comes down to winning these fights, which Prime City always has a chance to. A TP unclear, but it's all the way back to Courtyard. No more presence oh, in sacred. And for Sacred, who is very, very low, as is Cushé, still able to find T-Dog, though, and Lucas still holding down sight as well. We are on very low time, but we are also on very low health for these last two players. Ziff will not be able to win this, as Lucas is just able to dance around the pedestal, grab just a little no more time. Cushé is going to die here, too, but so will Ziff. Everyone falls as Crime City guarantee another round for themselves, playing the clock to a T. I mean, in the, half. the breakdown of the round simply, CC, when they push in fast, they're really hard to stop against four. Granted, yes, on a site, it was a singular hold, and Starly did a great job just whittling away damage, but the confirmation to end those lives didn't really work out well in Core's favor. That collapse was expected by CC this time around. They played for spacing, they played a kind of rotate around these little micro flanks against people inside a cliff. Lucas was so good to do that. And now for this final round, they're set. Thrash, the lockdown, you couldn't ask for a better arsenal set for ultimates. And that's why Core are playing aggressive themselves. They want to make sure nothing can get going on A-site. Bring them to B, bring them to C. Whatever you can do to keep CC rotating. And to get Nerf back in his prime position too just so that cutoff can happen again if Crime City decide to go for that late stage rotation. But instead, yes, they will indeed go for the C-Site. <laughs> and T-Dog perfectly guesses where Lucas is going to stage for the Thrash. Gets a second for that matter, too. Gorgeous Hunter's Fury to, again, just totally it's shut cool. down this initial push from Crime City. And now the speed is gone. Everything that CC has to show for themselves just absolutely torn to shreds. There's no way in for Renz here, and there is no way he's going to be able to get this round. A 1v4 that might actually get chased down for here, yeah. Core is hungry to end this half, and they will with an 8-4 scoreline. Core is so good at manipulating attacking teams into playing the site they want to. And a lot of those rounds, Core wanted CC to push into A site. They wanted Snarly to get all those Odin kills. So I like the great change of pace of that final round, and... T-Dog has such a large cranium, being able to match up perfectly against Lucas. Mid ult, mind you, too. But we swap sides now. Core on the attack. I'm really curious to see what CC wants to accomplish in these first few rounds. We talk about structure. 
CC, again, a team that's really only formed into this qualifier, they have the opportunity to just run around maybe and catch Core off guard, but they have to be clinical about it, and it needs to start on this pistol round. Viper wall comes down. A good early double flash from Seaside will help out too, along with the one way. I mean, yeah, this is That's bread a huge and butter for pick. sure here. Sacred is going to feel so fine in mound. So he'll uh, he'll stick around, even I'm though here. the hard rotation from Core is already coming. Ziff maybe sticking to see if Sacred takes a step too far. I don't think he will, but there's always a possibility. But that just means that there's three on Core for this attack up A site, where uh, we still have a friendly little Renz residing in the tree room, and the rest of CC already uh, hard rotating over towards drop and steps. So pretty clean setup there that Core, again, will have to kind of just turn down. Sacred, oh! <laughs> Sacred playing a dangerous game. So Big that... rotation from Core back over to C site there. The arrow comes down, good recombo, doesn't spot out Sacred though, but it wouldn't be hard for Ziff and Code to exemplify and figure out, okay, how can we just use this as bait to rotate back over to A-side again? <laughs> and it worked. Wow, okay, yeah, Ziff has made his way even more forward, and Core now have sight. Renz cannot hold this down solo. Snarly is able to play keep away with just a measly 37 HP, and can shut down the turret for that matter too, post plant. Now, it's gonna be T-Dog looking for one will, and can't escape in time. For the others to come back, though, refrag potential huge here for Crime City, especially if Snarly isn't hitting those last couple shots. Now Sight is a wasteland. Crime City can waltz right on and toss little guy down on the spike. Yeah, it doesn't really matter if you blind him, but actually they're just going to tap spike instead. They're just going to take the fights and win them. Crime City. Uh, it was clinical. It was clean. It was a fifth round that they can be proud of. Yeah, I mean, big props to Quar too for trying to go for these fake on fake dated plays yeah. across the entire map. But you know, CC took a page out of Core's book. They're like, no, we're not going to over rotate necessarily. We'll keep one body at least on the pain point sites that we think might still be an option. And even after, I guess what you could consider to be somewhat of an over rotation on C site besides that one body on A, it was still a good save for CC to be able to stick together and go for those double swings. And so now, Core, they have the option of just fast pushing the B site. A lot of teams will do this since the second round. See what can they, they can do for the early spike plant. Already set up and ready, though. CC are expecting this with Renz holding it down with a Vando, no less, again. Taking yet another page out of the Zeldra's book. Absolutely. I, I think it's good that, that CC continue this confidence. I, I, it's one of the things that they have going for themselves over core, regardless of what other advantages they can find for themselves. As long the as there's no phantom smokes. Yeah, just just don't just don't let them spam smokes and they'll feel great. Nerve is able to skirt around mountain and at least catch Lucas, but Sacred calls Seaside his. So Core once again will default back to courtyard. Well they'll search for some space. They have to do quite a bit of clearing though and actually Oh, they're they'll, doing uh, it again! No yeah. way! They'll just try and bait this rotation yet again, because they don't know how much oh. presence is on a site. There is now like a some. Sacred. I mean, they've spread the board kind of thin here, and Sacred has not dipped in too deep, but still has such a clean line. And now with no smokes, you have to dry this. And they will, with enough power where Sacred is going to let go of it at least once. Last Shock Dart, or Grab, Core have a little bit of space here, but they still have to dive in. And with the smoke, Sacred is able to stop it. Renz is also here for support. And that should be all she wrote. T-Dog has no real way into this. We'll just open door to maybe bait one out, but Sacred's gonna chase this down even harder. Four kills. Does this all for it. For this reign at Crime City up to six. Yeah, at this point, Korra realized they, okay, these big gigantic fakes are not going to work against CC. When you have someone like Sacred that can just singularly hold a site like C, you, you can't go for those baited plays. So I, I'm expecting either Korra again to fast push in the B and just overwhelm, or they'll have to just dedicate to one specific site this next round. T-Dog's close to that Hunter's Fury. That's a great way of clearing out a lot of this defensive space on a site. But the problem is, though, you have to fight for that orb. There's three from CC set up just to fight against this. And they're immediately going to get into it. Paranoid tossed into the cubby. That will have Sacred pop the Empress. And Spoof is going to dive back into door just to maybe elongate this fight a little bit. Sacred can't hit a shot. 
But the rest of Crime City seems to be able to just long enough. Couché. Spoof now popping into B to divert the flank. That Ziff will not get anything on. And now it's Couché's turn to flank. That'll go a lot better! What a two-piece to bring Crime City to seven. Wow, that was Ooh. such a sick round. Oh, I need to see the Zippo replay of that flick again. That was wild it's from Couché. And a complete blindside the core. The entirety of the back lines was open. That's not even to mention how Ziff fell. Ziff fell after Couché got past the KJ turret and was able to accomplish this. Now, not only do you have to worry about this offense that CC are bringing out very aggressively in the early round, now even in the mid round, you have to worry about the lurking flanks. Core have to go so much slower now. They have to wait their patience. They have to go for these picks one by one. Going fast didn't work. Going for the fakes didn't seemingly work this time. Off of a thrifty that's looking to explode on B site. They gotta clear a lot of it, including this util that Rens just trade for his life. Able to take down T Dog at the very least. But now comes the run in from Dora, and that is all that CC needs. Sacred just always wants to get in on the action and will this time. It's tied at eight here. Time and out? Uh, I, I think you have to. Because yeah. they certainly have answers, but I think they got to talk a little bit in order to find a, a concrete one. Well, it's because the info gathering from T-Dog is, you know, all the weight of that is on him. Yeah. You know, you're IGLing, you're info gathering for your team, you're coming up with these big, gigantic, grandiose plays. That's fine, that's all well and good. But the fact of the matter is that CC is a team that don't really rely on a lot of mid-round strategy. They're just going for kills, they're just waiting to see what you do next. And with a team that's playing purely reactively, once those initial fights start, it's really hard for him to find a pulse and what CC's mistakes can be. But there's no timeout. Yeah. Core feel fine in uh in just playing this gun round. And they do have a Hunter's Fury, so I, I they they seemingly have the tools to be able to play for the post plant, which they will now be able to, as they have uh just amped it up a little bit, turned on A site, and uh, you know, ask that same speed of Crime City. So now they can turn around and focus a little more on this flank that they absolutely know is coming. Enough where Zip and Nerf can clean it all up. It's a flawless round for Core. Everyone gets theirs this time. What an instant turnaround this round. Beautiful. No theatrics this time. Info gathering was solid. Straight to the site, straight to the point. Core, they have found their winning mantra again. Now it's up to CC to readapt, rechange their own pieces around and figure out, okay, well, if they're going to go fast now, we need to have a lot of structure on A-Site. We see that set up already. Couché is going to start with the Paranoia. Sacred and Lucas, that dynamic duo. No, I'm sorry, there's a third player in there too. That's Spoof. They're going to go for that trap-style play again. But Kor's not going to go for that either. They are going to bombard C-Site and give Renz a run for his money. Already having to let go of quite a bit here. And on the run back too. Yeah, this is exactly what Core need to do. And so CC, they're just gonna try and speed it up even more. Kushi's gonna TP onto site and try to play for the boxes. They need this early oh, angle, no. they feel. And Renz is able to at least get one, but Core will start circling the bend and trading properly. Zeldris to open up with a showstopper won't land anything, but it'll, it'll at least space out the site. Spoof also playing from the door to at least maybe stall one player here for Core, but it's not enough. Core. And still get on the site, still get this plant down, still start letting that util go. But with the help of the Dizzy, they're able to get on early, and Lucas and Sacred can clean up the rest. It will be a tied up game once more for CC. Dude, this is the Lucas and Sacred show. I it mean, is. don't get me wrong, Crusade, Spoof, and Renz have been doing a great job, but when it matters most in these really big, like, Warzone-esque like, ma meshes, matches, uh, battles, whatever. It is just Sacred and Lucas dominating the server. And yet Lucas is 16 and 15, but he's enabling Sacred to find so much value on this Reyna. 17 and 13, the, the assist values across the board for the team are fantastic too. But as long as Sacred can stay alive, that is a constant threat the core have to recognize and deal with, even if they have full sight control. Certainly the Thorn, but on which side? That's the question the core has to continue answering round yeah. to round. 
Honestly, and it doesn't even matter because then Seiku can just rotate and bombard the site like he did last round. I mean, that's what he's already doing. He's already, he's bomb yeah, rushing he's, Seaside. He's ready. The second that he's heard a noise, CC just calls the signal to at least shift that weight a little bit over towards C. So now Sacred is going to hold B Link so that they can't head on to uh, Ooh. the quick rotation. The lockdown is going to get used up by Ziff here. So it's got to be a heavy commit to C. Otherwise, it's it's just a box. But yeah, Zeldris is going to hop on. They're going to make sure that uh, everyone is taken care of. Which they are, and they'll uh, go ahead and plant here. In response, a lockdown from Renz that T Dog is going to look for and find with uh, that Hunter Spirit. Sacred's gone. So, with that gone, Core is able to continue locking it down, and Zeldris in particular is going to do a lot of the heavy lifting for that. Two for him so far, and still holding the close angle. He's going to be the first line of response to this waterfall, and on such low health, it's got to be an important one for the trade. Spoof will still find two before falling, so Ziff definitely has his work cut out for him, as does Snarly, both playing from the door, and they're sticking on spikes, but Ziff is able to sway through and grab it. Couché! The trade back and on the short, he no. can't find the shot. Snarly on 7 HP can shut it down. So damn close, but it's Core's round to win. Sure, why not? I mean, the breaking down that whole last round, it was just gunfight after gunfight. <laughs> again, I'm so happy that Core has completely changed up their strategy. They're not going again for the big rotates. They are just sticking to a site. I got nervous at first. I got really nervous when that lockdown came through because I wasn't 100% sure if Core was going to dedicate themselves to C-Site. There was, there was a brief moment where I thought, okay, they're going to bring down that lockdown and rotate the A-Site and fake it out. <laughs> I'm glad they didn't. And Core's going to double down again they won by the skin of their teeth oh. last round but the yeah the reaction now from cc is to push up aggressively the recon bolt is going to give that away but does it win them the fight because sacred and lucas are still going to take this make it now just lucas who is still now stuck in mound and dizzy is gone but it looks like core are satisfied with this portion of the fight and they'll take their interests to A, or perhaps there's a little less pressure. Indeed, it's just Spoof who is able to get a couple three shots in there and even take care of T-Dog before letting go of the showstopper. Double blast pack, can't let it go in time. And so we'll fall to Nerve. Core, beeline to A-Site with a 4v3 advantage, but still, it is slow going. It is tough. Pickens, Cushé though, poking his head out of the sand, only losing health for it. And Core so far, good shutdown of the site to be able to get that spike down. Now it's set up. And lock down. Get your positions in check. And there's a flank watch. There's a drop watch. There's presence on tree. And now there's the TP check to steps to make sure that CC is lined up in the way that Core would like them to be. Indeed, they are. Two out from steps, one out from drop. And they've got to do it just about now in order to make this work. They will go for it. There is no denying that. Too far in at this point to not. Lucas flicked on by Snarly. It's just Cushé, who is on so low that it... He's basically gone already. Indeed, Zeldris takes him down next, and Ren sees this a, as a fight he cannot take. At least getting rid of the scraps is snarly, but that is all he will settle for, as Core will bring it to 11. Yeah, huge, huge rounds again from Core. This time we see those big baited plays work out so well in their favor. Recognizing, okay, three there. We got rid of Sacred. Removing Spoof two on A side could have changed the round completely had he had that showstopper go off. That would have removed, what, two, maybe even three different players, depending on where that rocket was shot. I think we're going to see it here. Oh, just barely not. But again, it was a huge shutdown against Spoof. And look, if I'm Sacred, I'm looking for a way to play a little bit more defensively these next few rounds. A lot of these executes have been based off the death of Sacred specifically. And the confidence, once that Reyna is gone, has made Core soar into the mid round. A four stack set up on A yet again. No paranoia this time. Instead, one way set up outside C. No info yet, and neither outside of A. That door can open up. Yeah, this should and be it's been revealed. But they don't know how much is on B site, so they can't immediately bum rush this. So I think they can take an educated guess. As yeah, CC's just gonna hop into this. Zeldris, how much can you find to with the showstopper and a third into door? Spoof's paint shells will trade back, but the remainder of CC has so much work cut out. Renz has to clear quite the crowd. His core comfortably takes sight. Insane run by them here. Great read, great reaction, great team that is now on game point here in map one. At this point, if you're CC, you're probably looking to go for a timeout here. 
You need it in order to survive on this map. Sacred does have that Empress. Okay, but I'm more so looking at Snarly with that Viper's Pit. You're on map point, the first in the series. Core more now consistently getting onto a site and getting that spike down. Surely then we'll see the Viper's Pit. And that'll be a hard response, especially for Lucas. Without that Thrash ready, you have to rely on your little friends. Wingman needs to put in so much work. Viper Wall comes down yet again. Imagining now this round could be a little bit slower, maybe. But no, instead of playing defensively, Sacred doubles down and pushes way ahead of Lucas. And we'll be able to get Zeldris. This missed just in time to maybe keep this going. Lucas trying to dip his head in to help out, but will instantly get shut down by Ziff. Core maintains the presence. They know they want to take this fight against Sacred despite the Empress, which is uh, slowly tickering down. Nerve is going to uh, hold that flank watch, but Sacred has to have an idea that that exists. I love this, Tenrec. The cut noise, the reset. Yeah. If you can remove Sacred away, that'll be huge. Look at the rotates from CC. They're expecting that, again, a big rotate from seed A that they've done so many times. And CC are wrong. There is no A presence. I don't know if Friends is open door or not. I I, I wonder how much intel CC has. As it to looks like he has. I, I, I feel like he has. So they have to have an idea that there is not as big of a rotation as they may have gambled for. But the fact that there is absolutely nobody going and uh, the fact that there's cut noise everywhere will give Sacred, Sacred. the idea that maybe I should take a step back. Maybe I should get left. a better vantage, one that will let me force the these Viper? guys to check a lot You can't more. lose Viper here. Yeah, Snarly being the first one in here is uh, a bit of a dangerous gambit, but uh, everybody's going to slide under. Sacred has a lot more to watch, and Snarly's going to be the one that's actually able to get the kill. Kushje trying to save the day from the back line on the door. Cannot do it. And now the Viper's Pit set up the spike planted just in left. time from T-Dog and Core should be able to clean up from here. It's just Spoof and Renz. Snarly, though, already cut down to quite the crisp. Spoof may be just able to spray and pray this to find that kill. A very crucial one, in fact, but with Renz gone, it's uh, one that has to happen soon. T-Dog also quite low. Nerve, no shields. Uh, this is so doable, despite the fact that Spoof has zero util. But it's got to be so perfect in order to keep them in contention for this map. And T-Dog has the early front seat with the shorting. And Core will use that to grab a 13th round and the W here on Bree or Lotus. Not Breeze. Breeze is the decider. It's Lotus. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, they're both tropical maps, yeah, right? Yeah, same, basically the same. Is there a big difference between Lotus and Breeze, like, in terms of, like, biomes, like, region? They're both tropical. I've, I, but I, they've got to be, they're in different locations, right? I don't know. Yeah. Who cares? <laughs> I suppose so. But the big thing to consider taking away from that first map is that core, again, they had a lot of adaptability. They were challenged in ways that we hadn't really seen in previous series with them before. But the big important thing is that they adapted around it. They found out what the critical pieces that CC were relying on were and how to destroy that. Namely, Sacred and Lucas's dynamics, Spoof being that wild card factor in a lot of rounds, and also the fact that CC's attacking side was much more linear. They kept going for the same plays over and over and core they made some changes but they didn't have to make a whole lot yeah we've seen this story before but it's a much shorter one there is a beginning and there is an end but there's not too much of a middle for crime city they could say the same thing by the time that that uh that that last bit of the game rolled out unfortunately but we'll see if they can restabilize on a map that asks them to be it's ascent coming in from map two in just a couple minutes don't go anywhere They say in life, there are no guarantees. Hmm. They say a lot of stuff like that. Slow it down. Play it safe. Hedge your bets. So what? Are you gonna listen to that? Are you gonna stop because they can't guarantee you'll pull this off? No guarantee you'll win? No guarantee everything's gonna be fine?
life, you make your own guarantees. Nobody else will light your way. Start your own fire and keep it burning. And we guarantee you'll have one hell of a lifetime. Peace.